Hey folks, Jerry Stevenson, Chief Redneck in Charge at The Redneck Barbecue Lab, Gee's Crossroad, Benson, North Carolina. I'm here today in the RBL studios to show you how to make bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers at home, just like I do at mine. But before we do that, I'd like for you folks to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this video, share it with your friends. We're doing this for you guys as a way of giving back. Uh, how y'all give to us, we like to give back to you. And please, please, please leave your comments as to what you thought about this video and your suggestions right down here below. So this is one of the things, it's summertime here in North Carolina and we are blessed with gardens and vegetables and farmers and overabundance of stuff. And these are some of the things that I have just jumped into here in the past probably five to 10 years. Uh, growing up, I never really ate jalapeno peppers or hot peppers. Our peppers were mostly uh, the Serrano type peppers that we put in our, our apple cider vinegar, uh, that we put on our collard greens and stuff like that. But uh, these made their way along um, with a lot of the folks from the South that came up, migrant workers that uh, worked in our area, and they brought these along with us. And it's one of the things that I've come to enjoy cooking and using them for a variety of different stuff. And today I want to show you one of the things that I do with them that um, I think is a real creative way to make something that's a pretty good appetizer or a snack in itself and something that you can do. You can prep ahead of time, you can freeze these, and you can use them later on whenever you want to when you're running your smoker to like say cook a pork butt. You can throw these on on the side, make a nice little appetizer for you to share with your family, your friends, your, your sweetheart, whomever. So let me get into this uh, how that I do this. Um, and basically it starts with, we have jalapeno poppers. Um, I advise you, um, pro tip here, whenever working with peppers and you have contacts or anything like that, to always wear gloves. Um, the capsaicin in here, the oil that's on there, it gets on your hands no matter, it seems like how much you wash your hands inevitably, later on in the day, you're gonna be reminded that you work with jalapeno peppers when you wipe them across your eyes or you bring your finger up to your lips. And uh, that's one of the tips is, is Vinyl gloves go a long way when you're working with these. But the first step that I want to do with these is, is I want to core the uh, inside of these out. And basically what we've got is there's a core on the inside of these peppers that runs the length of these peppers and it's a rib membrane. It's white and it has a lot of the seeds. That's where the heat is in this pepper. It's not in the outside. The, house, the outside has a mild heat, a gentle heat. It's got really grassy notes that go really well with the smoker that we're getting ready to put it on, along with some of these ingredients I'm getting ready to show you guys here in, in a little bit. So first thing we want to do is, this is a corner, it's a jalapeno corner specifically. You can find these online, um, on the internet. Um, I advise buying two of them. Uh, if you start cooking with these the way I do, you'll use them all the time. Um, they're about six, seven bucks. A lot easier than using a paring knife. When you're using a paring knife to do this, not only like with my knives, they're very sharp and you can cut the outside of the skins and yourself as well. Um, so go ahead, pick you one up of these. Um, two days, certain, uh, certain uh, company could get them right to you. So basically all you do is you just kind of work it on to the end, the stem end of the jalapeno pepper. Um, just kind of take your time. I go around it, you, you can just jam this thing in there and start. Once it's inserted in it, don't wipe your eyes like I did, but go ahead and start twisting it in a uh, clockwise motion and just kind of keep twisting it till you get to the bottom of the pepper. You'll feel it kind of go down. We're trying not to rupture the outside. I split it just a little bit, but I'll show you how we keep it together later. And then once you do that, you pull this out. And as you can see, I removed this core. And this core, like I said, this core is where all of the capsaicin is. This is where the heat is in this pepper. Um, one of the things you can keep this, this is another pro note. You could throw this into uh, some vinegar and it makes a really nice uh, salad dressing with a little bit of oil. It's a jalapeno type salad dressing. Um, you can use this and stuff like uh, with the vinegar, putting in some macaroni and cheese and stuff like that. But uh, I'm just gonna get rid of this today. Um, the last thing I do is give this a good tap. If you're really worried about the seeds and everything, as you can see on the inside of this right now, this one's pretty well hollowed out and ready to go uh, for the next step. Um, do one more for you. Um, do these at real speed, but real speed, I get kind of destructive with them. But this, uh, this core really makes things a lot easier. Um, squeeze the pepper when you do it. 
You know, just like you were grabbing um, handle or uh, your motorcycle. Um, that's the other thing, kind of helps keep this thing together. Like I said, real easy. Knock it out. Makes work, uh, work a whole lot easy trying to get these things cleaned out. So now that we've done that, go ahead and pull some of the other ones we've got over here. Kind of set them aside for later on. Um, next thing we want to do is, is we want to put some kind of stuffing on the inside of these. Um, traditionally, these jalapeno poppers are made with cream cheese, um, just your basic cream cheese. And uh, we're going to use this as our base um, to make this filling that I like. Um, this is probably half a bar. Uh, the good thing about this filling that we are making here today is you can freeze it. So, meaning I'm going to have, I'm going to make enough for this plus a whole lot more, but I'm not going to use it all. So I can take this, put it in a Ziploc bag, squeeze all the air out, write the date that I made it, put it in a refrigerator. It should hold between one and three months. It never lasts three months in, in my household. Next thing I'm going to put into these jalapeno poppers, I've got about a cup of uh, chopped brisket. Um, I am blessed owning a barbecue restaurant that uh, hopefully a lot of you folks have been to, Redneck Barbecue Lab there on McGee's Crossroads. I'm blessed with a lot of scrap pieces of brisket, and that's the outer edges and stuff, stuff that may be a little overcooked, a little overdone, or may fall apart. We keep that. We use that for our brisket macaroni and cheese. We use it for dishes like this. We use it in our Brunswick stew as kind of a backup seasoning. Works really well. Um, I'm going to add as well to this, this is sharp cheddar cheese. I've got a cup, but I'm going to put half of it in right now. Um, and the reason is I don't want this, this too thick. I don't want it too thin either, but uh, I want it just thick enough um, to be able to hold in the pepper, but get into it really easy. Uh, the last thing that I put into mine, and this is where my variance comes in, and, and you don't have to, you can skip this step, but and man, I might be admitting sin here, but... Um, I love canned hot dog chili. <laughs> I grew up eating hot dogs all over North Carolina. My grandfather, he'd take me everywhere. And I love chili. I love my mom's homemade chili. I love the chili we make in our lab, which is like my mom's, my mom's recipe. It's a few variations. Sorry, mom. Um, but this is a canned chili that you can get in your supermarket without beans. And I like putting this in these jalapeno poppers. Um, it just adds a flavor component to it that uh, just kind of makes it for me. Um, once we've got that, we want to kind of mash all this stuff together. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely want your uh, cream cheese to be at room temperature, which this, believe it or not, was. It's been sitting out for about two, three hours now. But you definitely want that at, at uh, room temperature to be able to get this to kind of incorporate together. It may not look very pretty, folks, but let me tell you, it smells great to me. You can smell the cumin and the pepper, and I can smell the brisket in there too as well. So, all right. So, got this fairly mixed up. Normally, I would be using my finger to do this, but. They, none of, nobody uses their finger to take things off the spoon like my grandmother used to do and stuff. But All right. Our next step um, that we're going to do is we're going to take our peppers and we're going to start packing this in there. And this can be a little time consuming. So you folks will have to bear with me. Um, I may end up doing a few of these real quick. I didn't actually do them before we... Uh, before we started, but we just want to start packing these in. You don't have to get them super tight. Um, you just want to get them on the inside pretty good. All of these ingredients, by the way, are kind of ready to be ready to be eat. The brisket's cooked. The um, the chili is cooked. It just really needs to be reheated to about 165 degrees and it's ready to eat. So I don't like heating it up either. I tried heating it up before. 
I know somebody may say, hey, if you heat it up, it'd be easier to get into this hole. Um, it's just one of those things. It just takes a little patience, a little bit of time. But I'll go ahead and pack these in there. Now I've had these in a lot of places. Um, you buy them frozen in the supermarket and stuff. They're usually fried. Uh, we're not going to do that. You know, we're a barbecue company. We are definitely going to smoke these. And I found that I like them smoked. It adds another layer of flavor to it. That's uh, pretty, pretty outstanding to me. We'll be using a hickory and cherry wood on these. Uh, puts a great, not only a color to what we're about to wrap these with, the bacon part, but it gives this little sweet flavor to the outside that um, I just find it's really good with these. All right. And this is what I said. This is one of the things that you can make ahead of time. You know, in the videos, a lot of times I talk about um, making stuff and I'll probably get the rest of these here off camera a little bit in a second. But this is one of the things I always talk about. You know, if you're smoking something, you ought to think about some of the other stuff. Um, I'll sometimes smoke these, throw mushrooms in for something else. Uh, you can always make these in big batches. And like I said, put them in the freezer, keep them in the freezer and pull them out when you're smoking stuff, make a couple for you, your family or whatever on the side. And um, just can be a nice little appetizer while you're waiting for the main meal. All right, next thing we want to do is we want to get some bacon. Um, of course, this starts the, the bacon part wrap of our bacon wrapped jalapeno stuffed jalapeno peppers. And we want to start uh, wrapping these. Uh, start from the uh, end that's not filled and just kind of work your way down. Uh, you'll notice one of the things that we are, that we are using here uh, are larger peppers. A lot of times one piece of bacon is good enough for the smaller peppers. I like the larger peppers with these. Obviously, the larger peppers are a lot easier to, uh, to stuff with, but also I think you can put one of these on a uh, tray and it makes a pretty daggum good appetizer it by itself. All right, so there's one. I'll go ahead and wrap the, another couple more. Make sure, don't do as I say, not as I do. Let's uh, always start on the end that's um, not filled. The other thing you probably want to do is try to keep your seams down on the same place because um, we're going to smoke these and it's important to kind of keep them wrapped together. Um, all right. Last but not least. All right, one more piece, get these wrapped up. If they start to fall apart on you, which this one's trying to, no worry, because we can always use a toothpick to hold these in place. And this, this one right here is being a little aggravating, but I'll use a toothpick probably to hold this one in place. Last step in my process for these uh, jalapeno poppers is, is I like to put a seasoning on them. Today we'll be using the old go-to, that's the Redneck Barbecue Lab competition seasoning, uh, the all-purpose one that we put on pretty much potatoes, you've heard the popcorn, everything else. Um, we're gonna give these a good coating on top of this. And then be ready to pop these into a smoker. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop out the rest of these real quick, go ahead and prepare them, 
and then we'll get these into a smoker. So we'll see you guys at the smoker here in a little bit. All right, folks, uh, went ahead, I got the rest of these jalapeno poppers made and seasoned up. We're gonna go ahead and throw them onto our uh, Traeger here today. Uh, we've got our Traeger up to heat. Uh, go ahead and put them in here. Shut the door. Uh, love to tell you guys about this smoker while we've got those uh, bacon jalapeno poppers in there going. Um, this is a pellet smoker. Uh, pellet smokers get a lot of bad nods when it comes to the barbecue guys and stuff, but actually I love them. Uh, they're really easy to use. There's electric controllers on them where you can kind of set your temperature. Um, they're, they're, this one will go up to about 375 degrees, 400 degrees. Uh, it can smoke low at 180 degrees, so you can do cheeses and vegetables, which I like to do. Or you can jump it up to 400 degrees and you can actually cook a steak on here. It's a little bit hard, but with little tricks, if you go to Traeger.com, you can see those tricks on how to cook a, uh, a uh, steak on these. But what I like about it is it's very versatile, very easy to use. They're basically, you plug it in, you put pellets into this hopper here. And today, the pellets that we are using is uh, Traeger's, uh, it's, it's a blend of cherry, hickory, and maple. It's probably one of my favorite. I can't actually remember the name of the uh, the, the pellet blend, but it's cherry, hickory, and maple. Uh, maple. Um, and you just basically put pellets into the hopper, fill the hopper up, it'll go for, I don't know, about eight hours if you have to refill it. But once you set this, basically you just walk away, the smoke will do the work. Uh, a lot of the bad rap that these get, it doesn't put a lot of smoke on it. A pro tip on how to put smoke onto your meat using a pellet grill or something that doesn't give a lot of smoke is, before you get ready to take it off, come spray a little bit of water on it. The uh, smoke molecules that's going through the air will adhere to that water that's on the meat or the vegetable, and it, it will impart that smoky taste that you guys are wanting. For me, I never really have a problem with it. I just put it on there and it tastes smoky when I pull it off. So we're gonna let these uh, bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers ride in there for a while. Come back, check on them. These are gonna take a bit while because they're a little bit bigger probably come check on them in about 45 minutes, but it can take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half for these to finish today. So let's go enjoy a little of our off time while these bacon jalapeno poppers pop. All right, it's been about an hour and about a half. We came back, checked on the poppers about an hour ago. They weren't quite right. We bumped up our temperature. We wanted to get that bacon nice and crispy on the outside. And uh, I think they're about ready. Let's see what they look like. Oh yeah. The bacon's nice and crispy. You can see it. See it rendered out on the bottom. We can see the grease and stuff on there right now. You can see where it's shrunk up around those poppers. Actually, see a little bit of ooze on it. That just tells me one thing. It's time to get these poppers off, get them upstairs, and let's we'll see how we do. So, go ahead and get these off. Take my Traeger, turn it into shutdown mode. Basically, shutdown mode on this Traeger just pulls it down, turns off the uh, ignition down here. The fire pot kind of burns out the residual pellets, and the air just kind of floats around, cools her all, cools her down, so we pull it back inside. So, let's take these upstairs and see how we did. All right, folks, we're back from the smoker. Uh, pulled off these jalapeno poppers. Once again, it smells wonderful. I know we do such a disservice to you um, with you not being able to, number one, eat or smell what's going on, but these are one of the things. It's just bacony, fragrant thing flying around the air. Just, man, it smells good. But let's recap what we did real quick on these jalapeno poppers. Um, we source some big jalapeno peppers, blessed to have a bunch of them here in North Carolina. They're available to us. We got some big ones. We took our jalapeno core, you know, the one I said you could find uh, on the internet, cored out those jalapeno stems, got the ribs and the seeds out of it, pulled that core out where that heat is. There's still heat in these, mind you. I've got a bottle of water on standby just in case I need it. <laughs> Hopefully not. But um, we uh, prepared our uh, filling um, with cream cheese, we used uh, one part cream cheese, one part chopped brisket that I sourced from the Redneck Barbecue Lab. 
Um, put into that uh, about, it's about a third of a cup of sharp cheddar cheese shredded. And then finally we put in probably about a quarter to a third of a cup of canned chili sauce. And that's the chili sauce you can find in your supermarket shelves without beans. It's something that I grew up on eating hot dogs, something I like. Remember, we stuffed that, we wrapped it. These pieces, actually normal jalapenos, you're gonna take one. These actually, we started wrapping, they take two pieces of bacon to wrap. Wrapped them up, um, let them sit for a second. Got started sweating a little bit. We took our Redneck Barbecue Lab original seasoning. Um, you can find this right here on our website at www.theredneckbarbecuelab.com. Find our sauce. You can find it here local in North Carolina. You type in your uh, zip code, uh, search parameter, 25 miles or whatever, press a button, and it'll tell you where the stores are at, located where you're at. No worries if you don't live in North Carolina or any place uh, close to here, you can order these on the web. Several of our purveyors on there do carry uh, online services for you guys to be able to get the sauces and the rubs um, sent to you wherever you are in the world. You say United States, now we can say world. So, I guess that's, no, uh, that's not it. You know what, you know what time it is. It's just a matter of which one do I want to try first. I think I'm going to get this one and give it a whirl. Um, they were really hot when they came off. I, I made a mistake when I was placing them, grabbing them with my fingers, and the bacon oil just got me. And I was like, oh, boy, you know, rude awakening. But uh, let's see how we did here. Let's go ahead and cut into one of these and see how we did. Yep. Looks good, our filling's still in there. First thing you get is just this burst of jalapeno when you, uh, when you cut into this thing. It's just like, whew, you know? And uh, my brain just tells me, it's like, well, how hot's this gonna be, son? Well, there's only way to, one way to find out. Um, this is another little trick I like to do for uh, you guys. Nothing goes better with jalapeno than cheese and the queso cheese that most folks get at the uh, Mexican restaurants you go to is nothing more than easy melt cheese with a jalapeno put in it Basically boiled together with a little bit of milk to thin it out and that's what we've got here Minus the jalapeno. I put a little bit of our redneck barbecue lab seasoning in this. It's easy melt cheese um and redneck barbecue lab seasoning in this just real simple it's a little salty um concoction that uh, it's it just adds a nice little touch to this nice little finish to it so let's go ahead and just do these up just the way they should be up you can dip these um people that know me are probably laughing at me right now just going son just use your fingers like you normally do but since this is on camera we'll we'll try this with the uh the fork and knife method. You know those jalapeno poppers you guys get as appetizers at these these fast food restaurants or the the, the casual service restaurants? You know the fried things, the little things, the frozen nuggets. Well, these ain't them. These ain't them at all. These aren't greasy. Most of the bacon fats rendered out. These jalapenos are smoky. They're tender. Not hot. There is some heat starting to come up on the backside. There's some salt in it with that redneck barbecue lab rub that we put in it. And a little bit as well as that, that easy melt cheese. Um, kind of gives it just that background salty kick. Um, there is some sweetness to the rub there. Not a whole lot. I don't really think you need overly sweet, although I can see it in there. Man, this would be good with uh, one of those waters, you know, the ones that are soaked with barley and bo boiled for a little while. I have one more, folks. I'm sorry. Mm. Been a long day and a great way to end it with that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Happy, happy, happy. You know, I kind of lied to you and said I don't dance. I do dance. You might not see it, but my, my belly's dancing right now. That's just a great bite. I am going to tear these up. I think Mr. Baker, who's back there peeping over there, is going to tear, help me tear them up as well. So once again, folks, these are um, my rendition of a smoked uh, bacon-wrapped jalapeno popper that we did on our Traeger grill outside. 
hopefully this inspires you folks to get outside and do this with, with your uh, significant other, with your family, with your friends, before your children. Do these ahead of time, throw them in the freezer, pull them out as needed, cook them when you want to. Don't buy those store-bought things, You're wasting your time. Do this, you'll promise you'll be happy when you do. I'm Jerry Stevenson. I am the chief redneck in bar barbecue, chief redneck in charge at the Redneck Barbecue Lab in Geese Crossroad, Vincent, North Carolina. Here at the RBL studios of a long day, filming some videos for you guys right here on YouTube. Please don't forget to go down here and like this video. Subscribe to this channel. I know you already do, but if you don't, shame on you. Go subscribe right now. Click on that bell so you know when the new videos drop, right when they drop. Share this with your friends. Inspire them. Show them what you're doing. You're doing this outside. Show them. They're paying for this down the road and it's twice as, twice as expensive and 50 times as bad as something that you can get in the supermarket and you guys are making something fresh, healthy and stuff at home. Leave your comments as to what you thought about this video and suggestions as to other topics that you would like us to cover in the future in terms of cooking. Um, until next time, you guys, be kind, smile, be patient with one another. Let's pass along that positive attitude to everyone. Let's make that contagious. Make that contagious. Make positivity contagious, you know? Starts with us, it ends with us. Love you guys. See you guys down the road somewhere. Y'all be good. Bye.